Good evening, everyone. Uh, while I was playing around with Lumion, um, I kind of realized that there was a lot of tools that uh, I actually didn't really know exactly what they did or I didn't use all too often. Uh, you can access these tools in the majority of the objects uh, that Lumion places. So let me just uh, place a tree down here. Uh, now, as you can see, we have uh, focus on selection. We have find selected object in library, select all identical objects, select all objects in the same category, that kind of thing. So I just kind of want to run through all of them just to show you what they all do. Some of them are pretty um, self-explanatory, but there are actually a couple that work um, in specific ways um, that I just kind of learned by playing through them. So the very first one that we can just kind of see here is replace selection. Um, so if you have a bunch of uh, objects selected, and maybe I'll put down a couple extra trees just to show you. So if you select all of these and you go to replace the selection, um, then you can just come in here, click this, and then all the trees are going to change. So that will save you a bit of time if you know you have like the um, the areas that the trees are going to be, but maybe you haven't settled on a particular type or you need to change it around. Um, so that's a really great tool. Um, the next one is the um, we have the focus on selection. So if you just click one, um, then it will just zoom right in on this tree. But watch when we kind of zoom out a little bit. I select all of them and then hit it so it, it has a much wider like kind of range um, so if you just have all those objects selected then it will just focus the screen on in the correct area um, which can save a lot of time especially if you're kind of like far away and you have to like zoom in or whatever this way you can just uh, zip right to the object um, and i'll just deselect these and so the next one is find the selected object in the library now this is one that you know, it's you're not going to use it a ton, but it could just save you a bit of time here and there. If like you want to see like to see this tree, um, maybe others in the category, you can just click it and it'll pop it uh, right open to the page where it can be found. Um, I know that I've kind of just opened it up myself and kind of went through them trying to find the one that I want. So being able to do that can uh, save a bit of time. Um, and the other one is select all identical objects. So these are obviously identical objects of this one. So if I click it, they're going to get selected. And just to help demonstrate this a little bit better, I'll throw these two trees in the background. Uh, so if I click this one, select all identical objects, they're going to get selected. If I click back here, select identical objects, then they're going to get picked in, uh, picked up there. Um, but if I come and I drop in a rock, so let's put that there. Uh, if I click on the tree, and obviously if I do select identical objects, these ones are going to get picked. But maybe I want all of the trees and not the rock. That's when you do select all objects in the same category. Click that, and as you can see, all the trees are now selected, but the rock isn't. So if you are working with large nature scenes, this can save you a bit of time in that, where it's like, you know, you select all the trees, and you go like, okay, we don't want, you know, variety in these trees. Maybe it's all like a particular kind of pine or something like that. You can change them out very quickly. Um, and the next one is the randomized position. Um, so I don't actually, like, I, I was thinking about this, and I'm not really sure... Uh, of an example when this would be used because you know, maybe if you just have like you're just trying to do like random scatter or something like that but um, you know it seems like the cluster kind of does the same thing but if you click it then it's just going to go to random areas now um, I could be wrong about this but I think that the area so if you go randomized position having them in kind of like a zone like this is going to make I think almost like a circle around it or like a shape around it. And then they're going to be randomized within that, like within that, um, that area. I could be wrong about that, but that appears to be what the case is. Like, it seems like they don't stray very far from this. So, um, that must be how it's done because if you put some trees out here, then the same thing would kind of happen. Um, so I'll just undo these. Now the randomized rotation, this one can be, um, great if you're doing, um, let me just go back here. So if you want things to be a bit random, um, it can save not only um, a lot of computing time in other softwares. Lumion is pretty good at optimizing this already, but um, instead of having like 10 different trees, that what you can do is just copy one tree and then um, change the rotation. And that actually is normally enough to make it seem like all the trees are random. Um, just because trees are um, just the way that they're shaped, just by rotating them a bit, it can look like an entirely different tree. Um, so having the ability to come in here and just hit randomize rotation and get a little bit more randomness there, um, that can really help. And the same goes for the uh, randomized size, which is the next one we'll look at here. So you click that, and then as you can see, it just kind of goes um, and makes some different sizes. But you can also have a slider here. Um, and I believe that's just like the variance. So it'll go like... Um, 
within uh, 50% up or down of the original tree. I think that's how that works. Um, but this is just 10%, so the trees are basically the same size. As you can see, this can be a lot bigger. It is random, uh, but we'll hit that. And then the last button in this row is the uh, reset size and rotation, uh, which kind of speaks for itself. So if you just want to go back to where we were, you hit that and then you're good to go. Um, the space objects evenly. This one could be really good um, if you're doing like a path or something like that. And you want to have it so that like all the trees are the exact same uh, amount apart just to give it like a nice clean landscaping look. Um, so if we click that, as you can see, um, all the trees kind of fall into the middle. Um, but notice uh, when we do this, that look at the positions of these two trees here. You click it and only these middle trees snap in. So um, I'm not sure exactly how that works, if it's the furthest left and furthest right from the camera. But it seems like Lumion will basically designate two trees and those are almost like the pins. And then everything else kind of fits in between those two lines. Um, kind of like a, when you hit the divide button in SketchUp, where it's like you take a block, take it here, divide it and say like three. And then the blocks will appear in between, uh, taking up exactly the same amount of space. I think it kind of works like that. Um, now, this is one that I was originally I was like, I, I don't know what this would ever have a purpose for. Um, but this is one that I actually um, might have been mentioned to me by uh, a viewer when I was doing my construction phasing. Um, if you import a SketchUp model and you make sure that the origins are all the same, you could theoretically hit align positions and then all of the origin points would snap onto one another um, because watch what happens when we click this. So all the trees will go and just snap to one particular place. So if you had um, a bunch of origin points like I did in my video where I was actually moving them around, you could have just clicked this button. Um, and that's why uh, I, it's really important to kind of understand all these little tools that Lumion has, because um, while that didn't take a ton of my time to do that, if it was a much bigger scene, that could have taken me like a day of just setting everything up normally. Whereas if I could just did it correctly and import it, it could take me like 10 minutes. Um, so that's kind of a neat little, uh, neat little trick there. Um, the other one is the align rotation. So this one is just the exact opposite of randomized rotation. You click that, it goes back to normal. Um, now, place on landscape. This is one um, that I'm going to show you with both an imported um, landscape that I have and also the Lumion one. Um, if we take this and we'll just kind of, maybe I'll actually make this a little bit stronger, something like that. Um, so maybe I'll go like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the trees and I, you don't have to bring them all the way up. Um, I'm just doing this for kind of like effect. So with this one, if you hit the uh, place on landscape, then it's just going to zip right down until it hits the bottom. That's kind of, you know, self-explanatory. But the one that I also want to look at at the same time is the uh, conform to landscape. So if you hit it again, it looks like you get basically the exact same effect. So I didn't completely understand what the difference between these were um, because it seems that like trees always act in the same way, like they're just going to snap straight down. Um, but let me show you what happens if we choose something like these small rocks here. So let's just drop a bunch here. Now, as you can see, they're not really sitting on the landscape. Like this one's kind of sticking up. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these and then I'll take these up and then do the, the place on landscape. So if you see that, it just goes right back to where it was with the same kind of like orientation. It doesn't look right. So let's just drag these up a little bit and now hit conform to landscape. So as you can see, now they're actually sitting right on the landscape. Um, this only works with um, certain objects, it seems. Like, as I mentioned, trees don't really seem to kind of like, fun they just function the same way. Um, but it is kind of cool to know that because it, it can save you a bit of time instead of like rotating it, you just drop it straight down. Um, and it's good to go. And I believe that this works with flowers as well. Um, but it seems like it's like the smaller objects. Um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's kind of just the end of that little part there. I am going to show the imported, um, the imported landscape as well, but the last couple things I want to focus on are the align size and align, uh, align height. So first things I'm going to, or first thing I'm going to do, randomize the height, go like that. And then as we can see, these are different sizes. So if we hit align size, then obviously the uh, trees are all going to kind of uh, snap to the uh, same amount there. Now, what's kind of weird about this one um, or the uh, align height is that to my knowledge, the height like it's not the 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 object's height like it's not like the tree's height it's just the origin point so i believe if we hit this yeah as you can see some of the trees will pop up 
because now these are all kind of like on a, uh, a horizontal plane. Um, and yeah, but the, um, you can also tell when they're all flat like this, that the sizes are all the same. So it basically just reverts this, uh, the randomized size. So the same way this is a line rotation, um, the align size, uh, just works like that. Um, and yeah, so that's, um, that's all these tools. Um, I know that they're kind of like, you know, some of these are kind of like self-explanatory, but I do think that this video is even worth us giving a quick run through, because even if you just learn like what one of them do, um, then it's pretty cool. Like I, uh, definitely know some time saves that, um, like I'm going to be able to get in the future from this. And when it comes to Lumion, like these time saves are really, really important because one of the biggest features of Lumion is the time in which you're able to kind of have a, like actually get the, the renders out. So if you're spending, you know, five hours doing something that like one of these buttons could maybe do in like 30 minutes, um, of just playing around with, then obviously that's a huge advantage. Um, because time is a very important factor in Lumion more so than the other, uh, render engines, because the big part of Lumion is doing it, you know, in being able to do it in a, a fairly speedy fashion. So yeah. Um, let me know if, uh, you guys uh, learned anything from this uh, this video? I'd really like to hear sort of your thoughts on these uh, buttons, and just let me know what one you think uh, has the most potential. To, for me personally, I think it'd be this aligned positions because at first I, it kind of to me was like, why would anyone use this? But um, I actually want to go back and make a more complex construction phasing video uh, since the first one I did was just like the beginner one. I want to try and get uh, better at doing that and do some uh, more advanced things. And I think that this aligned positions has a lot of potential to really speed that up. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit uh, the like button and maybe even uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. If you are subscribed, I just want to say thank you very much for helping me support the channel. Uh, I really appreciate you guys always checking out the videos and uh, sending me emails and comments. Um, and I hope to see you in uh, some of the future videos I have coming this week. Um, there's a couple interesting ones that I'm filming um, that I've been having some trouble with for a couple of weeks, but I'm really hoping I can get that out uh, and have an example because I think you guys are really going to like it. So uh, I'll leave it there. Have a great night. Bye.